Do you think there's intelligent life out there somewhere? And do you think we're ever going to find it? I know you've spoken about how the universe is expanding so fast. There's some places that we'll never be able to get to, even traveling at the speed of light in any reasonable amount of time. What are your thoughts on this? And again, I always really like to hear your thoughts, Chris, because you have a perspective unlike any other out there. We all have perspective different than everybody else. That's the beauty of talking to people. Um, we've learned a couple things just in the last few years that helped me answer your question. Uh, number one is we learned how many planets there are in the universe. And the way we did that was we built some great telescopes like the Hubble telescope and now the Webb telescope, but also some of the telescopes on Earth that can actually see planets going around other stars. And we've seen, I think the current number is like 5,200 or 5,300 planets that we have seen orbiting other stars. And so that's a big enough sample that what we know is that on average, every star has at least one planet. We didn't know that up until very recently. Mm -hmm. So now suddenly that frees us up to, to make some big conclusions because we can see stars, even if they're a long ways away because they're so bright. We can see galaxies, which are collections of billions of stars. And we can see now with the James Webb Telescope, we have seen dense galaxies that were formed right after the Big Bang 14 billion years ago. So we can look back 14 billion years in time and we can now just count the galaxies. And when you count the galaxies, then you just have to multiply it. You know, you can count the planets. And, and so we know right now that there are at least a septillion planets. That's such a big number. You can't possibly imagine it. It's, you know, a, a million, a billion, a trillion, a quadrillion, a quintillion, a sextillion, a sept Tillion. I think it's one with 28 zeros or some incredible. It's essentially infinite. It's such a big number. You can't imagine a number being that big. There's at least that many planets in the universe. We now know that for a fact. And we know the other fact that there's life on Earth. We haven't found life anywhere else, even though we're looking, we're imagining, and you know, people are seeing UFOs and stuff. We have no actual evidence of life anywhere but Earth. But I just look at it. It's an absolute fact that in the four and a half billion year history of this planet, life developed. And it's been here without interruption for four billion years. And we're one of the products of that. So life is possible. And there are at least a septillion chances for it to have happened again somewhere else. The odds of it happening here and never happening in an almost infinite number of other chances, it just seems like myopically arrogant to think that it couldn't have happened anywhere else. But the distances are unfathomably huge, it's so big that time becomes dominant. And we don't know how to leave our own solar system. The best things we've ever built, the fastest, most capable ships we've ever built, have just barely left the edges of, of our solar system. They have you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of years before they could get close to any other star. And that's just the, the nearest stars in our galaxy, let alone the rest of the universe. But maybe with the work that we're doing in understanding black holes, Kip Thorne and the work Stephen Hawking did, and maybe we will figure out how to crack that complexity of the interrelationship between gravity and time and speed and, you know, E equals MC squared and all that. And and maybe someday we'll not only figure out how to live on the surface of Mars, but maybe we'll figure a way to cover, to cross those vast oceans between us and the other stars and, and maybe see and visit with other intelligent life forms. For now, though, it's all just an immense um, and hugely uh, inspirationally um, attractive area of research and 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 understanding for me. And I, I think about it a lot and, and I'm amazed and delighted to be at this alive at this time in history when we're kind of nibbling at the edges of answering your question, are we alone in the universe or not? Yeah, and over a 14 billion year timeline, like you said, you add all these factors up, you don't have to be an engineer to realize that it just becomes likely or highly likely it, it helps it helps to be an engineer like scotty here though you know that's, uh, <laughs> that's good. scotty inspires me scotty was uh, from the same town that i'm from 
In fact, uh, James Doohan, he's from Sarnia, Ontario, where I was born. So I even have a personal link to uh, to one of those Star Trek people. So, you know, they inspired me and the edges of our understanding and whether we're alone or not, that inspires me too. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.